Hello and welcome back everybody to 2KCW. We are one show away. Next week is going to be the Girls Grand Prix. Which of course the, fin the finals of that tournament will be for the newly created 2KCW Women's Championship. A first for the history of this promotion. The history of 2KCW and 2CW. Of a women's championship. Of course, the winner of the Grand Prix will face Dizzy Jet in the finals for the title. Before we get to there, we got to worry about this match of first Ultimate Death facing the 2CW champion, the 2KCW champion himself, Eric Anderson. As Anderson prepares to face off against Devin Andrews at the Grand Prix. After the heinous assaults on Devin Andrews from Anderson. Anderson showing very little respect for his challenger at the Grand Prix. It may just boil down to the simple fact that Andrews knows that he is a high profile talent and he wants a title shot immediately where as opposed to Anderson he had to work his way up to the top but we have to wait and find out what happens at the Grand Prix ultimate death a legend in the independent scene has held over 50 different championships in his career and I would have to say without a doubt of my mind that if he could defeat the champion here that would put him in prime position for a future title opportunity much like Reed Carter did back before unfinished business so the Norse horse Eric Anderson makes his way in the ring and he's ready to face ultimate death. Also worth noting in tonight's main event, two spots, yes, two spots in the Grand Prix are up for grabs. That was a announcement made earlier by the network executive Craig Spencer. Again, in regards to the Grand Prix, we'll have to find out whose spots are on the line. And then who the opponents are going to be, so we'll wait and find out the fallout of that. Flying cross body from the champion. Eric Anderson is a proud champion, defeating Leroy Punch Beef again at Unfinished Business. Cover here after drawing in the Iron Man match. Back in our, back at 2KCW with Thon. Tying in the Iron Man match and then losing in overtime. Death now. Going after Anderson into the camel clutch of the force. With Anderson's feet under the bottom rope. Force the hold. Break the hold. Death now into the cover on Anderson. One. Barely even one. Elbow by Anderson. It's going to make it harder for Death to see if he even struggles with that mask on that he's got. Anderson throwing Death into the corner and the clothesline to the back of the neck. Now Anderson with the Dragon Sleeper slam. Cover here. Barely a, just a one count, and Anderson's almost in shock that he was able to kick out of the Dragon Sleeper slam there. You don't ever sleep on Ultimate Death, that's for sure. 
Car and elbow tie up. Anderson getting that exchange. Running Bulldog from the champion. And now he rolls him over, covering the half. Referee in position. One count. Again, that might just be the whole reason why Anderson is not favorable to Devin Andrews. That he just waltzes in here, addresses the fact that he is not going to be here long term. That he's just here to prove a point that he can hang with his brother Kurt and win the title. And I mean, I can see that argument from Anderson's perspective, but again, he's approaching it the wrong way, especially as the champion. Into the corner, death with a spinning splash to Anderson. And of course, last week, Anderson lost a steel cage match to the former champion, Leroy Punch Beef. Death now setting up Anderson all the way across the ring, spinning in Zagiri. Connects the champion right on the temple. And Zagiri sets up in the corner. Death for the crossbones. Ultimate death from Death Valley. Is this going to be the end for Eric Anderson here tonight? No. The Norris horse continues to fight here against Ultimate Death. Anderson sweeps the leg. And that is wrenching the neck. Maybe even to try and stifle the breathing of death. Cover, even with the mask on. Again, if you can... I've been there in that situation where if you can disrupt the pattern of someone's, ab someone's ability to breathe, that'll give you a bit of an advantage. Throw them off their game, not only mentally, but also physically. Death rolling under the bottom rope and getting a breather here against the champion. I'm not sure. I guess what he's thinking here that maybe Anderson's not as big a deal as the champion as he thought he was. But Death now, fist drop from the middle rope. Catching Anderson, cover here by death two. Two count for ultimate death here. Standing shooting star press from ultimate death. And a death with a Uranagi. A standing Uranagi to the champion. Anderson's been rocked for a good minute now. I say that, he's a, back on his feet. Anderson maybe looking to set this match up for the end. Setting death up for Odin's bidding. Cover. Enough to put away death. No. More often than not, Anderson puts matches away with the Valkyrie strike, but he went for Odin's bidding instead. Anderson's going to go for it again. Odin's bidding, but Death able to counter off the waist lock. And now into the Ricola bomb from the champion. Now just kicking Death while he's down. Into the corner. Anderson teeing off with a series of Right hand uppercuts. The 
Round and around we go. Anderson not letting up on death. Running drop kick connects. Ultimate death. Clothesline missing from Anderson. Hurricane around the takedown by death. Death gaining the, gaining the advantage for a moment. Anderson's just goading Death in to try something. Left hand from Death and Anderson was rocking now a right hand. We don't see a whole lot of striking ability from Death. No, they're standing here in Agi. Grapple game speaks enough words for ultimate death. We don't see him hitting his strikes very often. And now death setting Anderson up again for the cross bones. Center of the ring. His head went. As death draws. Death draws near for Eric Anderson here. Two, three, and Death is beating the champion. An ultimate Death picks up a big win here. And now the sign sh show respect being shown here by Anderson shaking hands with ultimate Death again. It's probably just the way Anderson prefers. And now we move on to singles action in our tag team division. Curtis Christian, accompanied by his partner, of course, Cameron Neo. Together, collectively, they are the C batteries. And we haven't seen either Curtis or Cameron in quite some time ever since losing ever since losing uh, their last title opportunity at Adrenaline so Curtis Christian is going to be taking on one half of the tag team champions here Akira Matsumoto Here in moments, the seemingly unbeatable tag team champions. The Awakening. And of course, their full stablemate, Akira Yamashita, will be taking part in the Girls' Grand Prix. It's going to be the Green Ranger versus Curtis Christian here. Again, Akira Yamashita in the middle of the Pink Ranger. She'll be competing in the Girls Grand Prix. But the bracket still yet to be determined. But one thing I can determine for you is we have two surprise entrants. One, a complete and honest mystery I don't know anything about. But then the other one is going to be a competitor from the GAW Academy. Our sister promotion over there. We don't know exact down in Atlanta. In the GAW Academy, we don't know who is going to be joining us for the Girls Grand Prix, but it's going to be a treat nonetheless. They got a lot of great talent down there in the GAW Academy. So here we go, Matsumoto and Curtis Christian. Squaring off here, collar and elbow tie-up. Christian with the wrist control. And bringing down Matsumoto to one knee. So Christian has the advantage for right now. Now into the Fujiwara armbar from Matsumoto. 
Take it down, Christian. Here we go again, another calling level tie up. Side headlock this time for Christian. Off the ropes, Matsumoto shoves him off. Into the back body drop. Kind of action you would see from atypical cruiser weights. Very much in the style of when the luchadors ran wild in ECW and WCW. Back level by Christian. No, did he? A suplex of sort from Matsumoto. Cover here. One count, and Christian still stays alive here. Back up on his feet. Matsumoto doing the same. Dragon screw takedown from one half of the tag team champions. Kick misses, and now a side suplex from Christian. Now Christian working on the left arm of Matsumoto. Into the corner running drop kick. Not once, but twice from Curtis Christian. Cover here. Curtis Christian really turned himself around. In singles action, and he, benef and he turned it into tag team action to benefit Cameron Neo. Again, the unstoppable tag team until they hit the brick wall that is the tag team champions, the Awakening. So let's see if this time off has been some benefit for the former challengers. Well, essentially every tag team has been challengers for the Awakening, but they turn away all challengers so far. Matsumoto setting up Curtis Christian. The standing brain buster pile driver calls the dragon's breath. Pile driver cover here by Matsumoto two and Christian still stays alive here. Off the dragon's breath from Akira Matsumoto. Swift kick right into the abdomen and face first back into the mat. Nothing pretty about it, but it's effective. Cover here. One count from Curtis. And nothing that Cameron Neo nor the rest of the members of the Awakening can do. Butterfly suplex turned into an arm bar here. Nothing anybody on the outside can do other than just watch. Otherwise, it would be a disqualification, as you all know. And Christian was able to turn the leverage around and bring down a couple of strikes on Matsumoto. Gut buster by Christian. And Curtis is being absolutely spent here against one half of the champions. Now elevated gut buster by Curtis Christian. And now he sets him up for the down to earth. Can Curtis Christian knock off one half of the champions? Two, no, Matsumoto stays alive. Christian flying forearm into the atomic drop into the slam and Christian the knee right to the gut now even Matsumoto coming back here so here's the close lines and sweeps the leg. Christian into the 
Awakenings corner. Not where he wants to be. And now Matsumoto with a powerbomb out of the corner. Now Matsumoto maybe singling. The end is near for Chris Christian. Caught an elbow. Close line. Taking down Matsumoto. That'll decapitate you. Swiftly. Matsumoto rolls outside. Spinning back kick misses. Up on the shoulders. Into the gut buster from Christian. Elevated knee drop from Curtis Christian. Still laying out Matsumoto. Strikes. Blocked and countered. And Matsumoto from out of nowhere able to hit the dragon's breath. Once again to Curtis Christian. Rolling into the cover. Is this going to be enough? Two, three. Kira Matsumoto picks up the victory over Curtis Christian. Kira Matsumoto puts on a hell of performance here in singles action against Curtis Christian. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, I'm being told right now in my headset that for the Grand Prix, it is now confirmed that the Awakening will be taking on Smooth as Silk for the Tag Team Championships at the Grand Prix. So the stage is set for the Awakening at the Grand Prix. As we now move on to our main event, again, the aforementioned, there's two spots on the line. I don't know whose spots are on the line or what they did to get in trouble to lose them. Okay, well, this is a interesting development that the Suicide Blondes have to fight for their right to stay in the Grand Prix. Because they're coming out here, and I I don't know any more than this, folks, that there's two spots were still available, and, I mean, we only have six women on our roster, but that the Blondes have to defend them to stay in the Prix? I don't know about this. This is about I guess just to maybe just to continue to back up what they've been doing to Charlie Evans I don't really know but whoa wait 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 who the oh my folks this is Tia Green one of the newest signees into the training academy up in Syracuse Tia Green, baby punching her ticket to the girls Grand Prix. Not much is known about Tia Green other than that she's a, a pleasure to watch in the ring and a hell of an athlete, but I think I'm I think I'm starting to connect the dots here that one Tia's in one spot. Her friend is not far behind. Wherever Tia Green goes, Tori Crawford follows. Ladies and gentlemen, much like the Suicide Blondes were packaged, the old same were for Tori and Tia. Tia and Tori were, they are best friends to the end, and but... The only difference is that Tori is 
willing to use underhanded tactics in order to score a victory and Tia is not willing to do that. She's the purest of the two. I would argue that Tori would probably be the devil on your shoulder and Tia would be the angel. These two don't tag each other very often, but when they do, it's got to be under special circumstances. And I would argue, would have to say this is one of those circumstances right now. With a Grand Prix spot on the line for both members. So it's going to be Cindy Danger and Tia Crawford starting things off here in our main event. Again, Grand Prix spots on the line. Crucifix bomb from Cindy Danger. Cindy going right after Tia. And Cindy keeping firm control of the match so far. Just trying to scout out the new blood for all that she can. Now Cindy's in the wrong part of town for Green and Crawford. Sounds like a clothing line brand if I ever heard one. Double hit toss from the newcomers. And you can hear the crowd here just booing Tori Crawford. And she goes right out to the head of Cindy Danger. Now Tori. Yeah, innovative knee bar here on Cindy Danger. Look at the size difference between the blondes and Tori Crawford. Tori is a freak athlete. Just the size difference between these teams. I wouldn't want to be in the ring there with Tori Crawford. No way in hell. Cindy switch position, Cindy Danger. Hurricane Rana assisted from the ropes. Now Tori in the blonde's corner. Tag May, here comes Paige Storm. A swift left kick to Tori, but Tori gaining the advantage right now. Grabbing the neck of Paige. Paige able to fight out of it. And now it's Paige. Similar move set. Similar move there. Her another takedown from Paige. Storm still teeing off strikes here against Crawford. Crawford bow sweeps the leg and again into that knee bar that she had on earlier. You can see, oh my god, you can see the left, the left foot of Crawford was right under the kneecap of Paige Storm. Large amount of pressure. Tag made here comes Tia Green. Double super kick. To Paige Storm. Best friends to the end, but how they decide to get wins in the world of wrestling is what puts them apart from each other. To be able to gut kick to Paige Storm. Now Tia said no for the Dude Buster. Maybe this time it should be the Dudette Buster for Tia Green. In the corner, and then that's exactly what I'm talking about. Quick sucker punch from Tori to Paige. Something that Tia would not cross the line to do.
perfect example of what keeps them different from each other. A right hand right across the face of Paige Storm covered by Green. I think Cindy barely was able to break it up. Now Cindy knocking it down into the springboard elbow to Tia. Both women are down. Everyone except Cindy and Cindy is all the way on the other side of the ring that Paige has got to crawl to in order to make the tag. Whoa! I may take back what I said earlier about Tia. Maybe just because she was provoked. Now Paige being introduced to the turnbuckle animal style by Tia. Cover here by Green. Cindy able to break it up. Now driving the knee and then the straight jacket here by Tia Green. The Paige Storm is Paige going to get the tap out here and lose this spot for the blondes? No. Yeah, making the tag to Tori. And now into a regal stretch here by Tori Crawford. A large frame of Crawford. Putting all of her weight. And now into the rear naked choke with the body scissors applied here to Paige Storm. Is Paige going to tap out to Crawford's rear naked choke. It doesn't matter if she napped or tapped, but Tori looking possibly to end the match there, but Paige able to escape out of it. Tag made here comes Cindy. And now both the Suicide's blondes going for Bring the Heat. As we haven't seen, I don't think at all, bring the heat finisher. Tia barely breaking things up. That could have been the end right there. The bring the heat by the suicide blinds. And now danger with the famous star. Now Danger working the right arm of Crawford. Danger almost dumped outside. Tag Mater comes green. And now a side rush and leg sweep from Cindy Danger. Goes danger ran into a roundhouse kick from Tia Green. Tia's not done. She's stomping away in the digits of Cindy Danger. And Green again with a dudette buster. corner not able to make the tag to Crawford but danger able to turn things around to a running clothesline bulldog combination you now Cindy may be looking to end this match referee making sure that Tori keeps her distance not quite there's the trouble me and the danger close from Cindy Danger. Broken up in a poison run, it looked like, from Storm to Crawford. And now Green. 
Throws Danger into her corner. The opposite corner, I should say. Well, these two got in mind. Double back body drop to Cindy Danger. Now Tori teeing off with a series of clotheslines into the face buster. And now Crawford, what's she looking for here? We're gonna move out of the corner. Not able to connect with whatever it was. Danger with a double axe handle. Taking on the much bigger opponent. And Danger somehow keep the blinds in the Grand Prix. Double drop kicks into the crossbody. Oh, she's been that well before. Too many times back by backbreaker by Crawford. Looks like a spring back kick attempt missed by Crawford. And danger. Sending her throw first into the middle rope. And Paige is not even going to try to tag herself in. As the referee is dealing with Paige in the corner. Got her up for an electric chair driver. Cover here by Crawford. Two, three. Tory Crawford and Tia Green are going to the Grand Prix. A hell of a match and an effort by the Suicide Blondes, but just the fear into the unknown on who their opponents were going to be here tonight. That obviously had to throw them off their game. There's the bring the heat from the Suicide Blondes. Well, congratulations are in order for the first big win. And they're going to the Grand Prix. Folks, that's going to be it for us this week. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week for the Girls Grand Prix.